Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm Kurt and today we're going to do a little follow-up on that Toby Eye Tracker video from last month. That one got a lot of attention which is great. There were a lot of people who disagreed with me and that was expected and that was the discussion that I wanted to have. My hope was that someone might tell me something that would solve my problems with the Toby, but that didn't really happen. However, an unexpected chain of events did lead me to some meaningful solutions that I wanted to share. For those of you that have a Toby and were having some of the same problems I was, stick with me here in this video and we'll come back to, uh, to what I discovered and how to set it up in a few minutes. However, if you don't already have a Toby, I want to reiterate that I still don't think the Toby is a great value for flight sim. I'm happy I found a way to make mine work, so at least I can get some value for money I already spent. But I still think if you're just looking for a flight sim head tracker, Toby's probably not a great choice unless you have $300 you just can't stand to keep in your pocket. Um, like I said at the end of the previous video, if you have the budget and you don't care, go nuts. It's not that it's a bad product, it's just that the price is bad. So let's get into the story of how this all came together. And before I do, I want to tell you I'm going to talk a bit about a product here that wasn't my ultimate solution, but it might work for some of you that haven't already spent money on a Toby. Learning about how this all works is how I got my Toby to behave the way that I wanted, and that probably never would have happened had I not received an email. Several days after I published that Toby video, I was contacted by the developers of the Beam Eye Tracker, which is a program that uses a webcam or a smartphone to provide similar functionality to the Toby. However, since they're just using your webcam or your smartphone, it's software only. This video is not going to be a review of that software, and I want to be clear that they're not sponsoring me and they aren't paying me to mention them. They gave me a free license key for their software so that I could check it out. And I did check it out. I don't have a really speedy webcam, but I do have an older Logitech that runs 720p at about 30 frames per second. And for those of you that don't know, the face tracking camera in the Toby is also about 30 frames per second. The eye tracking is much faster. Beam Eye Tracker claims to go up to 120 frames per second on a camera that can do it. And I have to admit that it'd be pretty cool if that's, uh, if that's true, but I don't have a camera that goes that fast, so I wasn't really able to test that. But the software does what it says it does. It does face and eye tracking, and while I didn't test it for a long session, it did perform pretty well. My understanding is that the free version will do head and eye tracking, and you really only need to buy a license if you're going to get into additional data or if you want analytics and things. So basically, for free, you could have a solution that might do what you want. Comparing with the Toby, the main thing that I noticed is that the Toby works better in low light, and that's because it has an infrared camera. But otherwise, the Beam Eye Tracker keeps up just fine. If you want to check it out, there will be a link in the description that link does have some data in it that identifies my channel as the source of your click and that helps my channel a bit so if you check it out please use that link however I also understand that some people are sensitive to tracking links so if you don't trust the link you can also just go to Steam and search for the beam eye tracker and now we're getting to the meat of the solution for those of you that are unhappy with your Toby's behavior in flight simulator Beam Eye Tracker uses OpenTrack as a middleware of sorts. And if you're not familiar with OpenTrack, it's a free open source driver for these types of camera software. While testing with the Beam Eye Tracker, I noticed that I had the exact same problem that I have with Toby, where my head movements don't always make sense. But since OpenTrack offers a lot of configuration options, I figured I'd start clicking around. And I found a setting that caused everything to start working the way that I wanted. And while digging around in the menus, I also discovered an option to use the Toby as the camera input. And so I did. And boom! All of a sudden, my Toby worked the way that I wanted. So what I wanted to show here was the difference between the way that the Toby implementation works in Microsoft Flight Simulator versus the way OpenTrack did it. If I look over here, there's this guy who walks in and out of the scene. Uh, I can't see him right now. But anyways, um, he'll be along. If I look to the side like this, and then I try to lean myself uh, that way, which would be you know toward the front of the airplane, what you get instead is it moves me away from the window. And the reason for that is if you're looking at the camera view of me, it's as if the camera was out there on the propeller, right? And in that view, then what really did happen was that I moved my head this way, and so it moved my head this way. But since you're using this amplified head motion, like, you know, I move my head to here, and I'm looking, there's my guy, um, I'm looking 90 degrees to the side, even though I'm, you know, I'm looking about 20 degrees off axis uh, in the real world, as you see on the camera. So since there's no handling for that, what happens is every time you want to see where that guy went, and you do the natural motion like this, it zooms you back rather than moving your head toward the dashboard, which is what you were trying to do. In the OpenTrack settings, under Options, you enable 
relative translation. There is no similar option for this in the Microsoft Flight Simulator handling for the uh, for the Toby, and that's the game changer right there. You turn that one on. Now, if I go over here, see this guy? If I want to see more of what's going on, I lean over a little bit, and now I've moved toward the dash. That's what I would expect, because that's the way my head position is. If I look over here, same thing, right? Let's say there was something behind this pillar I wanted to see. If I leaned this way or leaned this way to look around it, it works. That's what I want. Um, that's the thing that was causing me the biggest headache with trying to get the Toby set up. And now that I've got a solution for it, of course, that's way better. That's the main thing. The other thing I wanted to talk about in here that you get uh, by using OpenTrack instead of using the, the built-in software, if you go into mapping here, in Flight Simulator, in the default settings, you have the little slider where you can set yaw and pitch to you know 1.2, 1.5, whatever uh, multiplier you want to have on how much head motion equals whatever distance in your in your game. And you know it's rudimentary, but it's it's there, I guess. But so this is in particular. So here we're looking at yaw, which would be you know my head motion this way, this way, and you can see the little ball here moves uh, as I turn my head. The scale on the bottom is how many degrees my head is moving, and the scale up the side here is how far the view is moving. So by moving this top guy, like if we set it all the way out to here, that would be linear. So as I move my head, the amount that the view changes is about the same, which gets to be a problem when you want to look you know, way behind the plane. you got to turn your head way back, and then you can't really see your screen. Sliding this along here gives you the main multiplier, and as you move it uh, to the to the left, it gets a, um, a stronger and stronger motion. This guy, and you can you can put multiple um, additional curve points in here, I believe. Yeah. So what, the other thing you can do here is, if you want, like I want the first part of this transmit this translation to be kind of gentle, and then it steepens a bit through here. See, and I've done that by adding this, and you can pull this around to get whatever kind of curve you want to the translation. And the purpose of this is that, like you can see now, because the way I've changed it, because of the way I've changed it now, as I move my head, very little happens at first, and then it really amplifies as I get further over. So this is super nice, um, because when you're trying to look at your gauges or whatever, they're not, you know, every little head motion, see I can move my head quite a lot before I really get any meaningful motion on the, well actually I, did, I didn't do pitch, so that one moved fast. but. I don't really get any meaningful motion by moving my head. So it's not really a dead zone. It's just a zone where the uh, where the motion is, is minimized. Super critical. Uh, and it's also something else that you don't get in the default implementation of Toby and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you have one for yaw, one for pitch. Now in pitch, I'm using, this is here in yaw also, this asymmetric mapping. But I don't want that in yaw because I want my head movements to the left and the right to be the same. But on pitch, I don't because I want a linear curve but amplified. So in this case, I didn't really bend this line at all. It's pretty much straight. But I don't want to have to, you know, try to look straight up because obviously I wouldn't be able to see the screen. So I do need some amplification on that. So in this case, it's pretty linear, though. That way, as I look upward, I can easily kind of figure out, you know, where I am if I'm trying to find something that's outside the window here. But if I want to look inside, and this isn't such a big deal with the small planes like the Cessna here, but in the bigger jets and things where you have a center console with uh, radios and things down there, if I look down, I don't want to have to point my head way down because then I can't see my monitor that's out in front of me, right? So what I've done is amplified, have a different amplification for the pitch down. And that's what this does. So basically, if I move my head up, you'll see the dot appear here, and it goes up. And if I move my head down, you see it's on this trajectory. And this one's quite quite a bit steeper. So what that allows me to do then is look down here, and like this is the add-on 152, and it's got this little tablet. And I can click my tablet very easily, get to it, and still keep my eye on the screen and see what I'm doing, right? Whereas if it was linear, I may not be able to do that. And if I didn't have some control over how the initial motion works, it might be overly sensitive, which I don't want either. Uh, similarly, in roll, which I've what I've done here is I've set it pretty minimal because I don't need a whole lot of this, you know. But sometimes it's it's comfortable, you know, when you're trying to look, you know, at a crazy angle to be able to roll a little bit. So I did want that. And then in uh, X, Y, and Z again, you have all these controls. So this is X is the side to side motion, which it's fine. You know, I just left it one-to-one, -one, basically. The Y motion is up and down, and this one I split, and what I did here, and the reason why, is 
you don't often find yourself like wanting to move way up, you know. What I was finding was sometimes when I would tilt my head back, the camera would register an upward movement. And I think that's because my eyes, it's really looking at your eyes. And I think my eyes, you know, since they move up in the scene a little bit, it was translating that into a vertical motion that I didn't want. So I tuned down the upward vertical quite a lot. But I've got the downward vertical at one-to-one, -one, and the reason for that is similar to why I have a different down motion on, uh, on my pitch. But if I want to scrunch down to see something, I don't want to have to, like, you know, be a, <laughs> a contortionist to do it. I just want to be able to, you know, do one of these and look and see, and I can see what's underneath there. So that's real handy to leave that at one-to-one. -one. And then Z, this is the zoom movement. And in this case, the top bar is the uh, is the backward motion. You see the ball moves on the one you're doing. And the forward motion is the bottom one. Well, I don't want the full motion because it gets to be a little too extreme. Going backwards, I really didn't want very much at all because if I'm leaning back in my chair, I don't really want my view to change. But if I'm leaning forward, I'm probably trying to look at something on the dash. So in that case, I wanted these to be a little different. So this ability to set it asymmetric like that, it doesn't exist at all in the Microsoft setup. And again, this is game changing for the Toby. This is the kind of stuff you need to be able to do to really have a totally comfortable experience. So with all that done, you know, when I look forward now, I can get right in there. If I need to look at a little gauge or something, I can lean right in and see it. If I lean back, it doesn't change very much. When I'm flying, if I, you know, if I'm looking around a little bit like this, my view's not all over the place, which I couldn't get the Toby to do that because it either has a Oh, sorry, <laughs> my hands in front of the camera. The Toby settings in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can set a dead zone uh, for the middle part, and then it just doesn't move at all. But you don't have that curve control that you can that you have in this software where I can set it so that you know these motions are real gentle. Like and if I move my head around just a little like this, that's fine. If I want to reach to a knob or whatever and I'm looking around, like if I move way over here, okay, I'm gonna lose it. But if I'm just sitting here and I'm moving my head, you know, the way my head normally moves while I'm doing things, it stays right there pretty much. So I'm able to to use the knobs I need to do. And of course I still have the shut off if it if it's really being a problem. But uh yeah, this is this is way better. And now I can move my head around and see what I want rather than getting weird that did it was like that guy was looking back at me. Um so that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you. If you've got a Toby, uh, I think this will this will help you out a bit. I think it's on par with the Track IR when I have it set up this way. It's a huge improvement. I still don't think that Toby is worth the money for what it does in Flight Simulator. So that's not a diss on the product. It's a good product. I just don't see it for Flight Simulator, which is exactly what I said in the previous video. But now using Open Track, I've got it working in a way that I like, and so I don't feel like I've wasted my money. Uh, for those of you that have a Toby and felt the same as I do, I encourage you to check this out. It could really save the device for you and make it a lot more enjoyable. And for those of you who already like your Toby, uh, you may like it better if you try setting it up this way, so give it a try. But to all of you that are looking for some kind of head tracking and haven't spent $300 on a Toby, uh, if you have a webcam, I think you'd be crazy not to check out Be My Tracker. It, it'll do everything you need. It does it really very well. Uh, the only downside is that it's a little more sensitive to lighting, um, but if the light in your room is good, you won't have a problem. If you already have all this stuff, check it out, find out. If it doesn't work, get something else. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something today. I know I did, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.